Hello and welcome to a special edition of Perspectives. I'm Deacon Pedro. Now, it's impossible to go through a week without hearing about Syria in the news. But what we hear is not always good news. We hear about war, about terror, uh, persecution, refugees, persecution of religious minorities. But the reality is that it's not all bad news. There are stories of hope. And to tell us more, I am now joined by Father Naura Samur. He is the National Director of Jesuit Refugee Service in Syria. Father, welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome to Canada. Back to Canada, I should say, because you studied here in Ottawa. Exactly, between 2005 and 2007 at St. Paul University. Yes, very good. Um, For our viewers who they've heard of Syria, but maybe are not quite sure, where is this country, how big it is? Tell us a bit about your country. You are Syrian. You were born there. I am Syrian. I'm Syrian. I was born in Aleppo, and I'm based right now in Damascus, the capital of Syria. Uh-huh. So Syria, it's a country at the uh, eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh-huh. It's uh, just under Turkey, from the north of Turkey, and uh, a little bit lower of uh, Lebanon. So it's, it's north uh, of Lebanon, south of Turkey. Exactly. And uh, Iraq, it's from west. the eastern, east, uh, uh, eastern side. Iraq is on the east side. Yeah, eastern yes. side. We are, uh, the west is the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. So it's the population, something like 23 t- million. Million. Uh-huh. million. And, uh, you know, it's a country, something like 2% of, the, of Canada in terms of, uh, of support, area. Of area, yeah. Okay. So I- in terms of Canada, it's not big, but it is a big country for the region. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is, I mean, I mean it's, it's something like 185 kilometers, uh-huh. uh, thousand kilometers square, the, yeah. the, the, the area. Right, and, and the population? The population, 23, 23, 23 million, million, 7% are Christians, something like 7%. 7%. Uh, and with other minorities like Alawite, Shia, Druze, and uh, that's it. Uh-huh. Something like all in all, minorities 25%, and the the majority is Sunni 75%. So Sunni Muslim. Or Sunni Muslim. Sunni Muslim is the majority of the population. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had many conversations in this studio about the Middle East and about the Holy Land. And some people think that You know, we think of the Holy Land, we think of Israel, Palestine, but we forget that your country, Syria, and Lebanon and Iraq, I mean, all the Egypt, can also be considered part of the Holy Land. Damascus has been there since, I mean, it's in the Bible. I mean, two facts only. Antioch, it's a part of Syria now. It's in Turkey. Uh It's the first place where Where Christians have been called Christians. Christians. Antioch, yes. The first century. It's in the book of Acts. The second fact, it's the the Via Recta, you know, in the Bible, Uh the straight road, Uh where the conversion of St. Paul with St. Ananias, you know, and we still have that chapel in Damascus, in all part of Damascus. So it's in somehow the, the cradle of Christianity as well. Right. So Christianity, Mm -hmm. that's where Christians were first called Christians. The population now, you said it's about 7% Christian. Is that about 3, 4 million people? No, I mean, at the maximum now, I would say it's, it's, the number drops till the... But it's dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like, we still have something 1 million, 1.2 million. There's no statistics, but I would say something like one point. 1.2 one, 1.2 million. But you mean it's dropped since the crisis in 2011 yeah. or even before it was and, dropping? And before a little bit, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of migration, Christian migration, uh-huh. uh, uh, started after, at the 50s of last century, uh-huh. mainly to the Latin America countries, a lot in Canada. Uh-huh. Here in Canada, we have, you know, yes, an important community in the States, in Europe, you know. Now, when you were growing up in Aleppo, it, was it a, uh, there was there a large Christian community where you were growing up? Yeah, something. When I was born in the seventies, Aleppo, the city, it was something like fifteen percent of the uh-huh. population of the Aleppo, the city. Right now, it's not even two percent. I would say. Really. Still have something like fifty thousand uh-huh. Christian in Aleppo, uh, of two millions. Right. And when you were growing up, what were the relationship, the relations between Christians, Muslims, and the other groups? It was very good. It was very good. I mean, 
we've never asked that question about about belonging, religious belonging. I mean, I used to go to school with. Uh, I had a lot. I still have a lot of friends, Muslims, yes. Christians, together. You know without going to the same club, you know, being fan of the same football club. Mm -hmm. you know. Of course, playing football together. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no problem. So, when did things start changing? I would say in the heart of the majority of Syrians, there's no change. We still respect each mm -hmm. other. We still love each other. Right. And we still consider ourselves as, as Syrians first. Yes. For the majority except for some of those who became fundamentalists, who became mm -hmm. radicals, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's, that there was a change. I don't know why, but because, according to me anyway, a lot of frustration mm -hmm. uh, regarding the biggest problem of the area, I mean, that the problem between Arab and Israel, it's yes. not solved yet in yeah. a very just way, so that's one issue. Yes. The second issue, it could be about all the problems for the, the country around Iraq, the invasion, you know, yes. all those issues yes. as well. So that changed a little bit the heart mm -hmm. of some people. But I would say, fortunately, it's not for the majority of Syrians, for a small number of Syrians, yes, a little number. And when, when the discontent begins with certain groups of people, was that discontent reflected in a government when a particular government took over? Or how did that, I mean, we know about the current government and the crisis that began three years ago now, I think? It's almost four years. years. It's almost four years. Um, but be, even before that, the discontent had already Yeah, before started. that, because of the, the international atmosphere, I would say. You know, there was, um, there was in somehow uh, a failure of a lot of ideologies. Pan-Arabism, uh -huh. uh, that was a failure. Uh, you know, all kind of secularism in the Arabic countries, Arab countries. So you discontent know. with the fact that the yeah. countries are becoming more secular. Exactly. I mean, no, because th there was a failure of secularism oh, uh, linked see. to the pan-Arabism, that, that biggest ideology. After and pan-Arabism uh, pan is that they wanted the whole... To have the whole united Arab nations together, Okay. you know, and it was, it failed. Okay, now, can we talk about that a little bit? Because I think that's another m misconception that a lot of people think that everyone in the region, that they're all Arabs, but that's not true. No, because we have other, we have other and ethnic cultures groups and cultures. We have Kurds, Kurds. we have Armenians, Armenians. we have uh, the... Well, Persians old, in Iran. Yeah, uh, yes. And all communities, Syrians, you know, Syriac, Assyrians, all those as well, they are not, uh, they are not uh, Arabs. And that's, I'm talking only about Syria right now. Right. I mean, if you could go around to as well, you have, you know, all the uh, former civilization from Northern Africa, mm -hmm. you know, they are not Arabs, no. you know. No, yeah. no. What's so called Berber in, in yes. Northern Africa, for example. Yeah, the Berbers. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the Christian population, are most of the Christians, what well, we are part of the, the Catholic Eastern Rites? Like you mentioned, the Armenians, I guess they would be Armenian Catholic. Yeah, we have the Christian, the Catholic, we have so far, for example, in Syria, six bishops. Okay. I mean, six different communities with different, different rites. Yeah. We have Melkite, Melkite, which is the Byzantine, uh -huh. right? We have Syrian, right? Uh -huh. We have Maronite, we have Chaldean, we have uh, as well Latin, and uh -huh. we have Coptic in Egypt, oh, so you, a yes. little bit in Syria, in Syria, and we have, what else? Armenians. 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 And the majority are Syrian Catholic? In Syria? The, no, the no. majority of, of Christians in Syria, they are Orthodox uh, from Antiochian okay. Patriarchate. So these are not Orthodox Catholics? And these Syrian Orthodox. Orthodox. Greek Orthodox. Greek Orthodox and Syrian Orthodox <laughs> and Greek Catholic as okay. well. That's did, the did majority of we already of say that it is complicated? It is, it is. <laughs> but, but, as you said, while you were growing up, it wasn't complicated because you're Christian, you're Christian. Nobody saw you as a Malkite or an Armenian or... You were just Christian, and even with the Muslims, you were all Syrian. Exactly. Since 2011, uh, when I think most of us started hearing about Syria, that the, there was, you know, the uprising, the the civil war. Can we call it a civil war? 
I called it the civil war. Yeah. Actually, I have. Yeah. Now I'm. I'm much more comfortable of of, tell, of saying that it's civil war than other things, with with the international dimension as well. Right. The the figure that I have is that two hundred thousand Syrians have died officially since twenty eleven. But you think the number is higher? I would think yes, it's higher than twenty 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 two hundred thousand people killed, because those who are dis who disappeared. Mm -hmm. We don't have any news. Mm -hmm. Those who are, you know, kidnapped without any news, and those who killed without being identified in somehow. Right. So. So you don't know. Yeah. Now you live in Damascus now. Yeah. How is living in Damascus today? Uh, listen, the daily life in Damascus, it's. I mean, if you go right now to Damascus, you see there's a traffic jam, there are people going, people going around, to work, kids going, going to, to work, yeah, 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 no problem. With the difference of checkpoints, you know, some, some, some roads are blocked mm -hmm. uh, for different reasons, especially for security reasons. And you could hear the aviation yes, bombing airplanes. somewhere, yes. airplanes. You could hear b b b fighting around. Right. And, in the city? And Yeah. And the city, there's no fighting. Some some areas of the cities, yes, mm -hmm. besieged areas, mm -hmm. and there's fighting. Yes. But, you know, the heart, the downtown of Damascus, there's nothing. It hap It could happen that we could receive some mortars as well, launched from yes. the other part. So the front line, it's something from the heart of Damascus. The front line with the first area of fighting, something like four kilometers. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. more. So you, we could hear everything, but life continues. Yeah. That what I say, it's the phase two, the phase one of the events. I mean, everybody was scared. I mean, they are, we are stuck at home. We don't move at night and yeah. we avoid to go out. That's the first, the the phase, first stage. The first stage, the first phase. Now the phase two, I mean, we go around. We don't care about tomorrow. And we, we, let's say, we live the, the present moment. Yeah. The present moment. And somehow it's a fatalism, yes. which, is, which is, according to me, dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous. I mean, we don't care about the future. People have if given it's going to happen today, let, let, yeah. let it happen. Yeah. I guess that's one of the effects of, of, of a war where people get used to it. And I mean, I've, I remember reading stories about Beirut when a, a car bomb would go off and people would just check that it wasn't their car and then they'd go to have their coffee. Exactly. Um, because they've just gotten so accustomed to it. Exactly which is not, the same. Yeah. Exactly the same. I mean, that's, 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 that's bad. Yeah. That's bad, yes. Now, the work that you do with Jesuit Refugee Service, tell us a little bit about the organization. It, it's, it's been around for... 30, it's going to be 35 years, since 1980. Yeah, exactly. What is the goal of the organization? I mean, it started in 1980 with the boat people phenomenon, you know, From in, Vietnam. in Asia Pacific, uh, for, uh, yeah, that region. Uh, people coming from Vietnam, going to Thailand and to other countries at, mm -hmm. the, at that region. And it developed thanks to a letter sent by Father General at that time, Father Pedro, Pedro Arupe, Arupe, who yes. sent a letter to all Jesuits from the, that region, telling them to welcome to those refugees and to help them, to do something mm -hmm. for helping them. And that was the first moment of the JR, as Jesuit Refugee Service. Now it developed. Now we have 10 regions mm -hmm. in all over the world, worldwide. Uh, Northern America, Latin America, Southern America, and Europe, four regions in Africa, uh -huh. one in Central Asia, one in Asia Pacific, and the last one was the creation of uh, Middle East and Northern Africa, our region. That's right, and you were the director of that region exactly. for, for the last four years or so. Yeah, and it started just to help Iraqis. So it started with the Iraqi in, crisis. Yeah, yeah, in 2008, and then uh, because of the events in Syria, it developed a lot. Now our region, which is the last one, and it was considered like the smallest one, uh -huh. it's the biggest region, the unfortunately. Biggest. Because I you mean, have more refugees coming from that region? I mean, in terms of population serve, we serve something like 35% of the whole refugee community we serve mm -hmm. in all over the world. Mm -hmm. And in terms of budget, we are the biggest budget. In really? terms of the... Uh, 
let's say, involvement of Jesuits who are the biggest number of Jesuit working, and in terms of involvement of volunteers and uh, staff, we are the biggest number as well. Right. So that's it. And is your work, would you say that the work is still uh, qualified as to welcome and to serve? The to refugees? accompany. To accompany, to, to walk accompany, with. exactly, and to serve and to advocate their own rights mm -hmm. as refugees and displaced people. So to accompany, it's about how it's n we are not a machine, I mean, a supplier of services. We are people working with people, human beings working with human beings. Mm -hmm. So we're not a supplier of services. So it depends on the way of welcoming those people, the way of, uh, you know, just uh, taking them as people, human beings, suffer in mm -hmm. suffering mm -hmm. so just to to listen to them to be empathic with them and somehow that's the aim what wh whatever the service we could offer if the way of offering that service that makes the difference so you, you might still provide the service let's say giving them clothing but how you do it is different that's than exactly it's about how to do things not uh, what to do mm -hmm. and do you have so in your region Syria um, would you have volunteers, Syrian volunteers that work with you and they're out there in the refugee camps? Where, where do you do your work? In Syria, we don't have any refugee camp. They no. are all urbans. I mean, okay. people who are completely lost so in these the are displaced, cities. Displaced Syrians who, sorry, Syrians who are displaced in Syria. Yeah, in different, in different uh, uh, cities, in different areas of biggest cities. Uh, we, we are talking about 5.5 million people displaced within Syria, and some of them, they have been displaced several times. And do you have Syrians that are in refugee camps outside of Syria, in Lebanon and other places? In Lebanon, there's no official camp. No. The majority of Syrians in Lebanon, they are urban refugees as well. Right. Yeah. One of the things that you do, I, I guess, in terms of advocating, is that you try to give a voice to the refugees. Exactly. Tell us how that works. The uh, I would say the 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 most painful uh, way of doing our work it's to be uh, like a partial and uh, you know and to have that approach of understanding I would say Manichaean approach. Uh -huh. We have for one side those who are good guys on the other side who are bad guys. Uh -huh. And uh, it's in kind how in somehow it's we discriminate people and we don't do that. We, re we welcome everybody mm -hmm. and we receive everybody. And we found out that majority of Syrians, they are voiceless indeed. I mean, in media, it's about extremism. If mm -hmm. there's, you know, a barbarian act, if there's uh, some atrocities committed, if there's, you know, some bombing uh, caused hundreds uh -huh. of death or casualties, that's in the media, it's the first, the first thing yes. is. Whereas the life of millions and the suffering of millions and the majority of Syrians, they are in suffering without having that voice. So those know. are the stories that we don't hear. Exactly. I mean, the good stories as the bad stories, mm -hmm. you know. So they are voiceless. You know, now for Syrians, the majority of Syrians would like to, 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 to be in peace mm -hmm. and would yeah. like to, to have that peace in a some in a such way where Syria it's always united and it's an inclusive country. Mm -hmm. It's not divided. And de facto we are in a divided country right now. It's yes. unfortunate. Yes. But for the majority of Syrians we would like to have a united Syria for all Syrians. How how is the threat of Islamic State, ISIS, affecting the whole situation? You know, <laughs> I mean it's, it's something we could not tolerate. I mean, it's not acceptable at all to have such a powerful and attractive ideology mm -hmm. in the 21st century, which calls people to kill others who are not like them. So why is it so attractive? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can't understand. In, 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 in everyone, in each one of us, maybe there, there is a small grain of fundamentalism, mm -hmm. of uh, fanatism or whatever. But, you know, the, 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 the culture, 
calls us to, to just to, to befriend that grain and to be a social with others in, mm -hmm. you know, a sociable human being with others in the society to build together. Whereas for those people, it became a beast. It became, you know, just... Uh, right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's not about only the right of minorities. They are against everybody. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they are against Muslims, they are against Christians, they are against different community of Muslims, they are against everybody who's not like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Jesuit refugee service in Syria, what would you say is your greatest challenge right now? For me, my biggest concern is security. Mm -hmm. I mean, working in a such condition of uncertainty, I mean, with, uh, I would say, randomly death mm -hmm. daily, so security of our staff, of our people, of our population staff, that's the first concern. Because death, and uh, it could happen everywhere, I mean, wherever, for whomever, uh, whenever. Yeah. So that's my biggest, my biggest concern. And so, uh, but you don't mean for your own staff, uh, as you mean in for, general? In general, but especially but for especially my own, for staff, own staff, my own staff and my, my own, I mean, when it's about, I mean, you hear about mortars, fallen in the area where we have centers for children and you call and you know that the half of children they didn't reach yet our center so you you are i mean yeah, i'm, I'm a little worried. bit yeah well worried. we hear about even priests or religious being kidnapped like you your targets as priests that that must be something you we have lost as jesuit uh, six months yes. ago seven yes. months ago in in old homes yes he was uh, savagely killed without any reason and God knows the way he worked for reconciliation and for being with with mm -hmm. with his own people without leaving the old city of Homs yeah. the residence of Jesuit yeah. to be in the service of everybody yeah now despite all of that you have hope that's how I started the program saying that we had stories of hope um, and it's hard to focus on that but we have to so there must be stories every day uh, families that you need, people that you need, that give you hope. Tell us some of those. Let me tell you two, th two things. Uh, in uh, Ramadan uh, 2012, that was the very uh, first uh, big fighting within Damascus. Mm -hmm. And we got people around in the parks, you know, without shelters, without anything. And we went around with some of, my, of, my, of our volunteers uh, bringing some something like 800 uh, falafel sandwiches very uh -huh. popular you know yes. in Syria just to distribute with some Jews yes and when we were going around for distributing I met a lady something she was something like 75 with only two bags with cucumber and tomato coming uh -huh. to us saying that's my capacity to help so please accept that and she was a Christian lady uh -huh. helping you know Muslims during Ramadan. Right. Another story, it was the distribution of clothing the last Christmas uh -huh. in 2013 and 14. Yes. And distribute, you know, kids, clothing kits for children, something like 2,000 children, 1,500 1, children uh -huh. from, of something like 1,000 family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we distribute the last day of distribution uh, we gave to two children with the mother, and it was the last day. The very next day, we received a visit from that family, children with new clothes, uh -huh. the mother and the father, with a handmade cake. And it was a Muslim family yes. to wish us Merry Christmas. And to thank you, yes. So you see, that those, ca those kind of stories, for me, it's a, a source of hope. To so keep you going. And yeah, it's worthy to keep on, to, to, to carry on and to continue our struggling for peace, I would say. Yes. And our I struggle guess, for peace. And I guess prayers are also good. So we will pray for you and we will do what we can to help the work that you do. Father Samur, it's been a great pleasure having you here. Thank, Thank you, you for much. the work that you do and, and come again. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Father Nawra Samur. He's the National Director of Jesuit Refugee Service in Syria. We're going to keep you in our prayers. If you want to help, you can find out more about Jesuit Refugee Service at their website, jrs.net. But specifically from Canada, if you'd like to support them, the best place to do it is through Development and Peace. That's devp.org. 
and also through canadianjesuitsinternational.ca. Um, let's keep our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, not just in Syria, in our prayers. Have a good evening. That's all for tonight.